Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zonta of Repo Products. This screencast will showcase how to create custom families, in particular, a custom baluster. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zonta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017 under the Recent Files window. Under Families, I can click New. It'll bring up the new Families template file window, and there's a whole bunch of Imperial English template files to work with. .rft Revit Family Template Files. We'll pick the one we want to work with, for example, Baluster, and click Open. It gives you a whole bunch of information to start off with. You're in an elevation view. You have the baluster height, the bottom and the top cut angles for you to work with, and you can adjust if you need to adjust. Since we're creating a custom baluster, uh, we can head over to different views, such as the floor plan view, and start creating our different types of form shapes, such as extrusion, blend, revolve, sweep, and swept blend. Let's head over to the floor plan view in the project browser. I'll do type in ZA for zoom all to fit, and you can see two reference planes. If you select one and you see it says define origins is checked, that means that where that one intersects with another one, that's the insertion point. So let's draw a simple custom baluster and then use it within a project. We'll head over to the create tab and we'll create an extrusion. Let's start with say a cylindrical circle. And if you need to control the diameter of this particular cylinder, you can always click this little icon to make the temporary dimension permanent and then parameterize it by selecting it and clicking create parameter. You'll notice also in Revit 2017, the label parameter feature is no longer in the options toolbar. It's up here in the contextual tab. You'll also notice that if you click the drop down list, it's going to give you a list of the ones that already exist and the ability to search. You have to click the create parameter icon here to create a new one where it used to be down below here in this drop down list. So I'm going to click create new and just put in here uh, post radius and we'll leave it as type for now. We'll click OK and then we'll finish the command. Let's head back to the elevation view and you'll notice that you have a simple cylinder extrusion. Let's go ahead and pull this up and place it so it aligns and locks to the top horizontal baluster height reference plane. The bottom of that cylinder also needs to be aligned and locked to the level. Now if this is as simple as it is, um, you can go ahead and load this and work with it in your custom project on a set of stairs or a railing, for example. However, let's head back to the floor plan view. <clears throat> let's create another extrusion. And this time I'm going to use the pick method and say I have one half inch thick offset. And then we'll use trim to corner command. TR is the keyboard shortcut. And create this post square portion that's below. We'll head over to the plan view. Now it's a little difficult to see. So what I'm going to do is head back to the plan view and let's make an adjustment to the size of this uh, square extrusion. So I'll select it, I'll click edit extrusion and then we'll change this to be one inch and then also on this side one inch and then on this side say three quarters of an inch and then lastly down here three quarters of an inch <clears throat> let's finish it head back to the front elevation and you can see what it looks like now Let's go ahead and make some minor adjustments to the design. Let's click and pull this up and align and lock it here. We'll remove the constraint that we had earlier <clears throat> and then lock it to this restraint. 
now that this is finished, we can look at this in 3D. And you can see you have a custom one created. Let's head over to a back elevation just to double check, a left elevation to double check, and a right elevation to double check. If we need to, <clears throat> we can create a parameter that controls the height of this rectangular top uh, portion of the extrusion. If also, if we need to, we can assign material to these objects as well. So I can select the base portion and under materials, click this little square here. This is called associating one parameter to another and you can create a new parameter to associate it. So we'll say baluster post base material. Click OK. Click OK. And do the same thing for the top portion. And we'll call it baluster post top material. Now the reason I did it this way is so that you can go into the family types window and when you look at the family types window you'll notice that you can click inside and make it any material you want instead of assigning it a direct material. So for example the base material finish <clears throat> will show up under the material dialog browser as different types that are available. We can click inside here to expand this window and pick a particular type of material. So let's do, uh, let's expand this and let's just do a search for say metal. <clears throat> so we have steel metal, let's just use that one. And then for the baluster top material, let's just use wood. So I'll type in wood under the search and see what material for wood we have within our current Revit family. We don't have any, so I'll just use this one. Click OK, click OK. If I shade it, you can see what it looks like. If I switch to realistic, this is what it looks like. We'll save this as a family. And we'll call it Custom Baluster 1. Now that we've created it, we can start a brand new Revit project. We'll work with the architectural template file. And we'll create a stair or a railing. We'll just do a railing. Let's look at this in 3D. And you'll notice that when you select that railing and go to its type properties under baluster placement, you can actually tell it what baluster family to use. So we need to load that into our current project. I'll do control tab to switch back to the family itself that we built earlier and load it into the project. Now that it's loaded, I can go back to the type properties and go inside and switch it to the one that I made earlier. And if you need to, you can also assign the baluster family for the start, the corner, and the end post as well. So let's do that really fast. And now you have yourself a custom stair railing that uses the design that you're working with. And if we shade it up, it looks like this. And if we go to realistic, it looks like this. Now, Sometimes you'll get little instances like this because you're dealing with the placement of it. So if you have to, you can make some adjustments. Say, for example, uh, we don't have a start or an end post. And hit apply, hit OK, hit OK, and they go away. And that's it. That's a quick screencast video on how to create a custom baluster in Revit 2017. Thanks for watching.